Have you ever heard the word clone before? You might have heard it in the context of biology. Or you might have seen pictures of Dolly, a sheep that was cloned in the early 90s in the Roslyn Institute of the University of Edinburgh. Cloning is also possible in Scratch, and it's very easy to achieve too. Imagine, for instance, a game with three fish swimming. We will create three sprites. If at some point we decided to have more fish, we would need to modify the program to add more sprites. This requires a bit of work, and it also limits in some way the games that we can create. In Scratch 2.0, we can create clones of a sprite. A clone is an exact copy of the sprite, which can also have its own code and characteristics, such as costumes and sounds. Cloning is a great technique for reusing our code and it is particularly useful when we need a large or variable number of sprites in our program. In this unit, we'll create several fun games using clones. The first one will involve hunting ghosts. In this game, ghosts appear and, similar to a popular film, you have to catch them and put them in a special box. There is an infinite number of ghosts appearing during the game, so implementing this with what we've seen so far would have been rather difficult. Luckily, Everything becomes much simpler by incorporating clones in the game. Several ghost clones will be created during the program, and each of them will disappear when touched by the box. So let's first design our game interface. We have two sprites, a ghost and a box, and the backdrop of our stage shows a room in a castle. Now let's design the code for our game. We need to program the behavior of the ghost and the box. We'll decompose the ghost behavior into two parts, the creation of clones and the movement until they're caught by the box. Let's implement this. In a new project, we'll delete the cat and introduce two new sprites from the library. A ghost and a gift, which could act as our special box. We'll also give them appropriate names. To complete our game interface, we'll introduce a castle backdrop for the stage. Great! Now let's program our two game characters. We want to be able to move the box with our mouse, so we'll introduce a go-to block inside a forever block, setting it to mouse pointer. Let's look at the creation of ghost clones. When the green flag is clicked, we want to continuously create ghost clones every few seconds. So we'll introduce a forever block and put inside it a create clone block from the control palette, as well as a wait block. We've defined when clones should be created, but we haven't specified what happens once a clone is created. We can do this with the use of the when I start as a clone block from the control palette. Let's first think about the initialization of the ghost clones. We want them to be placed at some random spot on the stage, pointing to a random direction. Let's implement this. The behavior of the clones involves moving around the stage and bouncing if on edge until they're touching the box. We can code this with the use of our repeat until block. As soon as a clone touches the box, it will be deleted, with the use of the block delete this clone. Let's test it. Hmm, my box seems to be working correctly, but there's something wrong with my ghosts. The very first ghost I had on the stage is not moving and cannot be caught by my box. In other words, it doesn't have the clone behavior that was specified. Oh, I see. This ghost is not a clone. It's the ghost sprite itself. One way to debug my program and correct this error would be to include a hide block at the beginning of the script for the ghost. In this case, however, we should also include a show block for the clones when they're first created. Let's test it once again. E Excellent! This is a great example of code reuse, as all we did was to specify when the ghost clones are created and what their behavior is, and we got a game with several ghost characters that we can hunt. We can now enrich this game to keep track of the number of ghosts caught. To do this, we'll define a variable called caught. 
its value will initially be zero. So we'll set it to zero at the beginning of the program for the ghost sprite. Whenever a ghost clone is caught, the value of caught will increase by one. Let's test our revised program. Brilliant! To stop the program execution, just press the red button. If you feel like it, you can make the box or the ghost smaller to make it a bit more difficult to catch ghosts. To do this, click on Shrink and then click on the object that you want to make smaller. We could add more elements. For instance, we could specify a game duration of, say, 10 seconds and after that, everything stops. To implement this, we can extend the code for the box to include a reset timer block at the beginning of the program and replace the forever block with a repeat until block. Its condition involves a game duration of 10 seconds and once we exit this loop, we'll stop the execution of the entire program. We can do this with a stop all block from the control palette. Let's test this new version of our game. Good stuff! It's a simple but fun game. We invite you to extend it further, to include sounds, to make the ghost move faster or to create more ghost clones during the game.